Hi, this is DarkFox127 and welcome to another Scrum Creation Kit tutorial video. Today we're going to be playing around with the render window, so we're going to find out how to move the camera around, how to move items, rotate them and set them to certain angles. So let's get started. Uh, I've just loaded up an interior cell here, uh, which is warehouse furniture. It's where you can go for like uh, good examples of items and pre-set up items and stuff like that. I'll uh, talk a little more about warehouses in a, a separate tutorial. So in this warehouse I've got loads of items to uh, play around with and I'm just going to teach you how to sort of control the camera first of all. So the first thing that you want to do when you load a cell is select an item in the cell. It doesn't matter what item it is so that the camera can actually just focus on sort of looking around that item. It's like a, a start point for the camera if you will because if you have nothing selected and you start rotating the camera it can tend to go off on one and you'll end up miles away from where you actually loaded especially if you're in an exterior cell so you want to select an item now to look around that item as I'm doing here you hold down the left shift key on the keyboard and then move your mouse and you'll just keep rotating around the item as you can see there to zoom in and out I'll use the mouse wheel on my mouse that'll zoom in and out in the item to move a little more free form, I'll click down the middle mouse button and keep it clicked down and then you can move the mouse around and you can go a little more free form around the map. Uh, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, that's how you control the camera anyway, so make sure that you do have an item selected like I said when you're doing these things or it just goes haywire. Uh, now items themselves are quite a lot of fun uh, placing items down to place an item down in the kit you're gonna have to go to your object window on the left here and select an item so we're just gonna find a chair here I've already got put in the filter so we're gonna select a chair and you just drag and drop things into the render window to get them in there and if it doesn't go drop to the ground that you want as soon as you drag and drop it and you'll find that it's raised off the ground like so you can tap the F key on the keyboard and it will floor anything that you've got selected. Now this isn't foolproof, sometimes it won't drop completely to the ground, sometimes if you've got a, a nice ambient effect or something in the way then it will sort of drop itself onto that and it won't work properly. So you just got to be aware of the F button, usually if it's in an open space and there's nothing else around it will work fine. Now you'll be wondering how to select uh, multiple items that are already in the kit you do this by holding down the left control key on your keyboard and clicking on the items that you want as you can see I can select multiple items let go of control hold down your primary mouse button which is usually left click and then you can move items around now if you've accidentally moved some items and you didn't want them there or you've performed an action that you didn't want to do then control and Z will undo that in most cases that works sometimes it doesn't which is always good. Now you can see on uh, a lot of these furniture items there's like these funny coloured markers which signify sort of the entry points to furniture parts uh, where NPCs stand exactly sort of shows the kind of action that an NPC would take sometimes you want to hide markers so you can just see the base items themselves you tap M on the keyboard and that will get rid of markers and give you a much cleaner view of what you're actually looking at so if you want to actually start moving an item around, we'll keep the markers turned off for the minute. Uh, sometimes the cell might be quite dark if you're actually in a, a really dark dungeon and you want to move items around and the lighting is off, so that will be this little box uh, not being clicked there. This up here will actually turn off all lighting effects as I've been viewing it and it'll just brighten the cell up so you can see what you're doing, see what you're working with so that's usually off on default and if you're working with a really dark section of the cell then you can quickly access that by tapping the A button on your keyboard and you can turn that on and off you'll be using that quite a lot with the kit so uh, now we get to actually moving items around now you've got a few gizmos that you can use to move items around and a few obviously uh, hotkeys on the keyboard if you hold down the Z button you'll see that this little marker shows up on earlier versions of the kit this didn't actually show so you were sort of working this blind but if you hold down the Z button hold down your primary mouse button and then move your mouse you can move items up and down 
and you can sink them into the ground. Now you'll see that I'm actually in sort of a, a freeform mode at the moment. It's not scaling to grid or anything. If you want to snap things to grid, you can do it two ways. You can click both these on here, your X and Y axis I think it is, or it's rotational snap and movement snap. So you can click on those and you'll see that it will start snapping to grid with the movements and the rotation. Or you can click them both on quite quickly by using Ctrl and Q for the one and Q on its own for the other one. And you'll, you'll probably do it that way most of the time, it's just quicker, easier, simpler. So that's how you'll move your item up and down. If you want to move it to the side, then you'll hold down the X button, same as you did with the Z, and that will move it side to side. We'll keep Snap to Grid off for the minute. So we Snap to Grid off, you can rotate um, really specific angles that you want. So I'm holding down the alternate mouse click for this, uh, right click for most people, and then move my mouse to rotate the item. Floor that down. Now, if we wanted to rotate it uh, in very specific angles, tap the W key on your keyboard, and then as you can see, we can sort of uh, put it side to side, forward and back. Got all different, three different sort of axes that you can spin this on. And obviously, most of these things work with Snap to Grid, so if I had Snap to Grid on, it would be doing it at specific angles. Now, all this can be changed in the settings. Uh, but I wouldn't mess with that too much until you're a bit more experienced with the kit. But uh, these settings here let you change sort of uh, rotational speeds, movement speeds, um, speeds that it just snaps the angles to, certain degrees. I tend not to mess with them myself, but you can if you like. So I'll just tap W off. And I'm going to just delete that chair. I'm going to put another new chair in. Now if you press 2 on the keyboard you actually get a, a nice little gizmo for sizing it, changing the size but you can change the size um, without that gizmo if you like so if you just click on the item that you want to resize hold down your primary click or left click hold down S on the keyboard for size, move your mouse and you can resize the item like that now most items have a limit to the size they can get to so the limit of this chair is uh, that big, that won't go any higher uh, that's to make sure they don't get too ridiculously big to cause crashes and to make the meshes look particularly ugly. So they've got uh, limits to how large they can go. So you just want to be careful with that. Let's put a new chair in. I've mucked that one right up. Another thing is the ability to temporarily hide objects in the render window. Uh, sometimes if you've got a load of items all cluttered together and you want to really focus on the placement of one, it's nice to be able to hide things. Uh, be aware that once you hide them, uh, it's going to be quite tricky to get them visible again. But if you tap one on the keyboard, it'll actually make an item transparent. But then if you click off that item and go to click back on it, you won't be able to click on it. Uh, you won't be able to actually select it. If you tap it for a second time, it'll go completely invisible out of your way. And if you tap a third time, it'll come back visible. But if you made that completely invisible and then clicked off, then you can't reselect the chair. Uh, I think there is an actual um, way of quickly reshowing all the hidden items. Alt and 1, I've never tried this myself until now, so Alt and 1, yeah. That shows everything in the cell that's uh, been hidden, so if you hid an item and you want to see it again, then just Alt and 1 will make all them visible again. Uh, so that's camera angles, controlling the render window, that is sort of uh, selecting items, being able to move them around, using gizmos. Uh, just check that I've gone through most of that, I think. Uh, toggle grid apparently is the equal sign, but that's not doing anything for me. Uh, I haven't tried some of these uh, keyboard mappings before. I'll leave a link in the description for all of the uh, shortcuts on the keyboard that you can use in conjunction with a kit. Uh, not just for camera angles and item placement, but for many other things. Uh, I'll probably go through some more in later tutorials. Uh, one other thing to do with a camera I'll just note is being able to go into different modes. So if you just press T, that'll put you in a nice perfect bird's eye view, which is really, really useful and the other mode is the Y button that lets you go certain camera modes I imagine it links itself to the the item that you've got selected I think as well yeah so that is how you use the render window uh, the nice basics of the render window 
I'll go through sort of uh, editing items in a, another tutorial. That's just the use of the render window for now. So I hope you found the tutorial helpful. Please check out my main website and my antisocial websites as usual. Please feel free to leave comments, but I can't reply to all the comments uh, anymore. I simply don't have time, so I'll see what I can uh, do about that. So that's it. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and I'll speak to you next time.